Hello, I'm Libby Munford, editor at Packaging Europe, and I'd like to welcome you to our latest video as part of our sustainability perspective series, where I'm pleased to be sitting down with Philip Hainfield, who is Senior Vice President of Innovation and Research Development of the Packaging Materials Division at Store Enzo. Hi, Philip. Hi, Libby. It's a pleasure meeting you. So we talk to leaders across the packaging value chain in this video series, which sits alongside our sustainability awards and the sustainability packaging summit to gain insights into the industry's path towards sustainability. And today we'll be looking at Store Enzo's innovation strategy and challenges with a focus on its long term goal of providing barrier layers in paper. So thank you for joining me today, Philip. Uh, can you tell me firstly about your role at Store Enzo and your focus towards creating a packaging solution portfolio that's renewable, 100% recyclable by 2030 and 100% circular by 2050? There, there's some major goals there. Yes, uh, Libby, it's my pleasure to be here and thanks a lot. Um, happy to discuss this exciting topic with you. Yes, and um, talking about our portfolio, we have ambitious and uh, quite clear targets, as you mentioned. And my area of responsibility, innovation and R&D will play a critical role on this journey, since there is still a lot of unsolved issues on the table. If you look at the first one, the first claim is that uh, in terms of being 100% renewable and recyclable by 2030, this means that we are looking into the substitution of all remaining fossil-based or non-recyclable components that we use today. In most of our portfolio, we've reached this target already. For example, boxes for e-commerce or paper bags for shopping. There it works actually quite well already. In other areas, especially where our packaging material is in contact with food or packs liquids, fibers are not holding long enough and plastic barriers are used. We are working with suppliers and internally to switch from fossil-based to renewable solutions. And mostly all of our packaging is technically recyclable today already, if collection is done in the right way. So if people actually put it into the recycling loops that are designed for it. That's not happening everywhere, as we all know. We are also investing in recycling infrastructure ourselves together with customers to make sure that those packages actually get fully recycled in Europe in the future. With regards to 100% circularity by 2050, so our second claim, it is a very demanding but yet achievable target. We know that we live in a finite world with finite resources. So circularity is a, most for, it's a must for many areas and our consumption in the future um, should not be impacted by that. We are looking into solutions uh, here as well and discuss with partners along the value chain how to best implement these ambitious goals. And uh, since we cannot do this alone, uh, this will mean that we work very tightly together with suppliers, customers and collectors as well along the value chain to get this implemented. Mm -hmm. So what are the main challenges in achieving your goal, uh, in particular uh, within the sector of food packaging um, and how are you addressing them? Yeah, as we just highlighted, food packaging is one of the most demanding areas for a good reason. Yeah, food packaging today relies on fiber structures that have a polymer barrier of some kind uh, to keep unwanted matter out, such as, such as oxygen to keep the food fresh, and unwanted and wanted matter in, like water or fat. Yeah, we also don't want to have these leak. Uh, synthetic polymers are a fantastic barrier. They work extremely well. We are actively working on treating fibers now to take over some or all of this barrier function and to use less and less synthetic polymer in the process. You can find suitable barrier materials in nature as well. For example, very dense microscopic networks um, of fibers or natural waxes. And those uh, are not used today for availability and price reasons, as well as some technical issues that are still in the way. Uh, nature is an inspiration to us, but hard to copy, I have to admit. And in the end, uh, we want to make sure the food is packaged safely and does not taste waxy, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So earlier you, you mentioned working with value chain partners to meet your sustainability targets. How does collaboration factor into making progress towards your goals? Yeah, we know that we cannot solve some of these very demanding challenges on our own. And we should not. Yeah, partners bring critical expertise to the table that is really needed in order to succeed. 
Systems today are simply too complex for one player to own and understand them fully. So we partner with suppliers, with customers, brand owners, development partners early in the process. We use the company infrastructure that we have at Stora Enzo from our colleagues in venture partnering when discussing the startup, for example, and to our engineering partners when building plants, all the way to our R&D colleagues for partnering with universities and learn new insights very early on. This requires an open mindset internally, a good share of pragmatism, I have to admit, and clear roles when it comes to contracts and intellectual property, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear, hear your own opinion on this. Uh, why are recyclable and circular solutions the answer to achieving a sustainable future for us all? Yeah, we, we live in a finite world, as I said, and in my mind, there's no doubt that we need to close loops and create circular solutions if we want to continue to enjoy our standard living that we do today, uh, looking at the growing world population. Mm -hmm. We have to focus on closing loops and those materials and resources that are scarce and that actually matter in that system. One of those is carbon dioxide, of course. As for that matter, carbon, yeah, we can simplify that a little bit. If we release ever and ever more into the atmosphere, we will have a quite uncertain and for sure hot future. Uh, by switching to our fiber-based solutions and by replacing and uh, replanting and managing our forests, we take more carbon out of the atmosphere than we emit. And we make uh, use of this, uh, for example, in food packaging. And packaging food itself uh, is important since we still waste way too much food globally. Now that we close the loop and we use, make use of the fiber and we loop it, let's say five to 20 times, if we stretch it, we can keep the carbon out of the atmosphere longer and at the same time keep the food fresh. It's a win-win. And at that point, we have to make sure that we use as little energy as possible for the loop and voila, a sustainable future based on circular fiber solutions. Lovely. Thank you very much for, for sharing your insights with me today, Philip. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for watching at home today as well. My pleasure, Libby. Thank you.